Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to look at the steps to transfer files between two computers over the network really fast. If you have a new Windows 11 computer, you may still need to transfer files from your old computer running Windows 10 or another version. Usually the easiest way is just to copy the files to a USB external storage and then move it to the new device, but you can also transfer the files over the network. Of course, using this method, you could use File Explorer but the process can also take a long time. However, Windows comes with the Robocopy command line tool, which offers the fastest way to copy files over the network between two computers in the same network. Okay, here are the steps to use Robocopy to transfer a lot of data over the network to a new Windows 11 computer. Although Robocopy lets you copy files faster than using File Explorer, it is always recommended to use a wire connection for the best results. The time to complete the transfer will depend on the connection, file types, and the hard drive performance. The copy process includes two steps. First, you need to set up file sharing on the source computer and then use Robocopy on the destination computer to transfer the files. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is to go to the source computer that includes the file that we want to transfer to the new computer. In this case, I'm going to be using a Windows 10 computer, but it can be another Windows 11 computer or something else using Windows 8 or Windows 7. And to share a folder, I'm going to open Start and look for File Explorer and I'm going to open the app. Now, you can share any folder that already contains the files that you want to transfer over the network. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go to this PC, open the C drive, and I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to share on the network. And I'm going to name it share all PC. Then I'm going to go to the location where I have the files that I want to transfer. I'm going to select all the files and then I'm going to cut the files and then I'm going to navigate to the folder that I want to share and I'm going to paste the files. Okay, to share the folder, right click the folder and select the properties option. Then click on sharing and then click the share button. In here, we're going to select the everyone group and we're going to click the add button. However, from the list, you can also select another group or another user. Then we're going to open the permissions level menu and select the read and write option. And then we're going to click the share button. And now the folder has been shared into the network and it should be accessible. And now click the done button. And here's another thing that it could happen. If you're using a Microsoft account on your Windows 10 or Windows 11 computer, you'll likely not be able to sign in from the other computer in order to access the files. And let me show you what I mean by that. So this is the link for the share folder, but I'm actually going to use the IP address because I don't have a DNS server on the network. And to do that, I'm going to open command prompt and I'm going to use the IP config command and I'm going to make note of the IPv4 address of this computer, which in this case is 10.1.4.174. Now I'm going to switch to the computer that I'm transferring the files to, and then I'm going to open File Explorer. Actually, I'm going to open Start and look for the run command. Then I'm going to paste the link, and you can use the computer name, but sometimes it's easier to use the IP address of the computer. 10.1.4.174. So now when we click OK, we are going to get a prompt to sign in into the remote computer to access the files. And usually this is going to be your Microsoft account. And then type the password and click OK. And as you can see, now we have access to the shared folder that includes the files that we want to transfer to the new computer. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes using your Microsoft account to sign in into the remote computer is not going to work. If that is your case, one thing you can do is to disable the password requirement on the remote computer. And to do that, we're going to switch in this case to the Windows 10 computer. And then we're going to open control panel and then we're gonna to go to network and internet, network and sharing center. And here we're going to open the change advanced 
sharing settings. And under Alt Networks, you use the password protected sharing settings and select the turn off password protected sharing and click the save changes. And that will make it so that when you try to access the files from the destination computer, you're not going to be required to enter a username and password. Now, if it still happens that you can connect from the remote computer, it's recommended to use a local account. If you don't have one already created, open start and look for settings. Open the app, go to accounts, go to family and other users and then click the add someone else to this PC option and then click I don't have this person sign in information then click the add a user without a Microsoft account and in here we're going to add another account I'm gonna complete the security questions and then click the next button. Once you have the account created, you should now be able to access the files from the remote computer. And to test the new configuration, I'm going to open start and look for run. And then make sure to type the path for the share folder and then click OK. In the prompt, we're going to use the account that we just created. And as we can see, now we have access to the files. Okay, after configuring file sharing on the source computer, you can now use RoboCopy to copy the files to the destination computer. And to do that, we're going to open Start and look for a command prompt or the Windows Terminal. In this case, I'm just going to look for the Windows Terminal. I'm going to right click on it and select the Run as Administrator option. And then we're going to be using this command. So basically the command starts invoking the uh, RoboCopy tool with the source path and the destination where I'm going to transfer the file to into the new computer. And then I have different switches, including E to copy subdirectories, including empty ones. Z to copy files in restartable mode. ZV uses restartable mode, but if access is denied, the tool will use the backup mode. R5 just tells the tool to retry the file five times if something's going on during the transfer, but you can change the number to something different. The same is true for W5, and it just tells the command to wait five seconds before retrying. TVD wait for the share name to be defined during the process. MP is for not progress, so the tool will not display the percentage being copied. V produces a verbose output showing skip files. If you want to speed up the copy process even more, you want to skip this option because the time that it takes to print the output on the screen also delays the transfer. MT16, it's also an important option, and that's the option that enables the multi-threaded copy on RoboCopy. If you don't use this option, RoboCopy will use the default of eight, which means that it will copy eight files at a time. In this case, I'm going to use 16 in the command to try to copy 16 files at a time. You can use a higher number, but it will require more processing power and bandwidth. So make sure to, to test this number if you want to copy a large number of files. Then we have the compress option, which is a new option only available on Windows 11 that enables SMB compression. This feature allows RoboCopy to request file compression, if applicable, as they move from the source to the destination over the network, removing the need to compress the files manually to reduce their size and then uncompress at the destination computer. The only problem is that SNMB compression requires additional processing resources during the process. Also, the option is more effective on networks using one gigabit ethernet or wireless connections. If you're transferring files over a hundred gigabit connections, compression is not necessary and sometimes might even take more time. Just remember that this 
compress option only applies to files that can use compression. So if you have a zip folder or an ISO or something that is already compressed or it can be compressed, it will transfer normally over the network. So when you have the command ready, you only need to press enter to start the transfer. If you get the accessing resource directory error, that's because the command tool doesn't know how to access the network resources. And one thing you can do to fix that is to use Credential Manager to store the account information for the remote computer. And to do that, open star and look for Credential Manager and open the app. Then go to Windows Credentials and then click on Add Windows Credential Option. In here, you need to type the name of the remote computer or the IP address of that remote device. Just remember that you want to use the IP or the name that you're going to be using in the command. So I'm going to be using the IP address. So that's what I'm going to be using right here. And then you want to specify the username and password for the account in the remote computer that will access the resources. I recommend using a local account. You can try a Microsoft account, but it might or it might not work. So I'm going to type the local account of the remote computer. and the password. I'm going to click OK. And now that information has been saved on the computer and the command should now be able to access the remote files and transfer them to the new computer. Now you need to retype the command. I'm just going to clear the screen and I'm going to recopy the command. And now I'm going to press enter to proceed with the transfer. And that's it. This is one way that you can use to transfer files over the network more quickly than using File Explorer. Now, if you're no longer going to use the old computer, you can turn it off. Now, if you're going to keep using it, you can turn off file sharing and you can do that by going back to the folder, selecting the give access to submenu and click the remove access option and then click the stop sharing button. Also, you want to make sure to go back to Network and Sharing Center on Control Panel and then open Change Advanced Sharing Settings. And on All Networks, make sure to select the Turn On Password Protected Sharing. Finally, if you're no longer going to use that local account, click the Remove button and click the Delete Account in Data. We can also open File Explorer and then we can open the folder where we transfer all the files and we can see that all the files are now in here. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.